YouTube, 21 episodes, the wilderness changes are here, oh, and the Iron Man has a fire cape. Let's get this show on the road. So the first thing today that we need to work on is our mining and smithing. It's going to be a bit of a grind, but I told myself that every time I hit a new tier of defense and I can make new armor, I'm going to level up my mining and smithing to go along with it. So it's actually faster XP to train smithing with rune ore than ore calcum, just because you can mine rune so much faster. And there's level 60 farming, by the way, just uh, taking a quick break from the smithing grind. So we actually just got ourselves a ton of rune ore already in the smelter and ready to go. But I was actually thinking that there are a ton of these Dorix tasks in the quest log. Uh, apparently you can do these every 10 smithing levels or so. You just have to do another quest beforehand to start all of it. So we're going to get into that real quick. But before anything, I am very proud to announce that today we have ourselves a sponsor. Boys, it's Raid Shadow Legends, the greatest mobile game of all time. Raid's got a ton of champions, over 600 now. And all of those champions come from unique factions, each with their own history in the world of Teleria. I always love elves. They're just my favorite in every fantasy story. The elves in Raid are pretty awesome. They formed civilization like thousands of years ago, surviving orc rampages and the collapse of the Lizardmen Empire, which I absolutely want to learn more about someday. Then Siroth got into their heads and created the Dark Elves. These guys were obsessed with power and they tried to convert the whole kingdom of Aravia to shadow magic. They got caught out though, and the whole kingdom descended into civil war. It was brutal, but in the end the Dark Elves got exiled and Aravia rebuilt as best as they could. So what's new in Raid? Well we've got the Forge Pass Season 3 with some amazing rewards on offer. Not only do we have some new champions, but also there are some awesome looking champion skins for the incredible Madame Ceres. But wait, here's the big news. Later this month, Raid is giving everybody's favorite champion the upgrade he deserves. Death Knight is becoming a legendary champion. It's something we've all been waiting for and I cannot wait to see how Ultimate Death Knight turns out. This is the best time to get started in Raid. If you click my link in the description or scan my QR code here, you'll get unique bonuses worth $30. We're talking a free epic champion, Rector Draft, 200,000 silver, 1 energy refill, 1 XP boost, and 1 ancient shard. All this treasure and more will be waiting for you here. So the first thing we need to do is called What's Mine Is Yours. This quest actually replaced the original Dorix quest. Uh, apparently it's voice acted, what the? Nice. All right, this should be the quest complete. A uh, cute little quest about reuniting a family. Very nice little cute cutscene here. Everyone is clapping and cheering. I like this. Oh, we're good friends. We are very good friends. All right, there we go. That is uh, What's Mine is Yours completed. Uh, now we have access to Doric's tasks, which I believe you can do every 10 smithing levels. So because we have 62 smithing, we can actually do six of them. Okay, this should be the first task completed. 250 smithing XP. We also get charges on this amulet. I'm not 100% sure what it does just yet, but I'm sure I'll figure that out. And this should be the second task completed. 500 XP this time. Third task completed. And this should be the fourth task completed. Number five. And this will be number six. Actually, the last one that we are able to complete for 8,000 smithing XP and 24,000 charges on the amulet. So the charges actually, they act like bonus XP. So as long as you have charges on here, you get extra XP when you're smithing. Anyway, let's go on to actually training this skill. Doesn't matter if I'm streaming or if I'm literally just playing the game, Myth always has something he needs to show me. Apparently this is urgent and we must head to Catherby. Poor guy, doesn't even have quick charges for his teleports. What a freaking noob. Go to Edgeville and bring raw food. See, Myth tried to show me the four candle joke um, from the candle maker. When you try to buy four candles, it gives you an item called a fork handle. I'm coming, I'm coming. Use the food on this rock. Wait, are you serious? Can you smell what the rock is cooking? And it cooked it, dude. That is too awesome. What the hell? <laughs> okay, it looks like we got a ceremonial sword thing here. Um, I tried this before and I think I failed horribly, but I think I know what to do this time. So essentially, you can use a certain amount of hits. Um, you can do careful, soft, medium, or hard. And basically, you want to make the blade here match the blade up here. And it tells you kind of how many hits you actually need. <laughs> Wait, what? What? You broke the sword. You'll need to get another set of plans now. Okay, I think I accidentally went over on one of the numbers. Alright, well, I take back saying that I knew what I was doing. I clearly still don't. 
Of course, anytime you're on the smithing grind, there's uh, lots of mining to go with it, so there's level 70 mining. And there's 65 smithing. Slowly but surely, we are making progress. So I decided to take a small break from the smithing grind, and we hopped on a live stream and finally got ourselves a weapon drop from Barrows. Alright, what style of defender do you wish to make? Melee. Torag's hammer? Yes. Bada boom, bada bing. That is the corrupted defender. Acts as a shield. When damaged, you have a 6.6% .6 chance to reduce incoming damage by 50 to 95%. And you get uh, plus 20% accuracy. Hell yes, dude. Now, basically, the only reason we really need this is because we need this to get the next defender. Isn't that correct? I also went and did some duo art Glacor with all five mechanics. My friend Gunner here has a very similar leveled Iron Man, and Glacor's health scales with how many mechanics are active. And although you get slightly less loot, it's much better to duo this boss if you get the opportunity. It's definitely a ton of fun with friends. It's nice when you get lots of this phase, because you can just do, like, so much damage here. Because, like, he doesn't have any kind of order to his attacks, right? They're just completely random. That's why you can get back-to-back -back cannons. Yeah, we should have him here. Bada boom, bada bing. To be honest, I think I'm going to go for the five mechanic solo kill somewhat soon. Um, that's how you unlock the hard mode. Obviously, I probably won't be doing the hard mode for a while. But before we do any of that, I just got level 67 smithing. We are still chipping away at this 70. I'm hoping to get it by the end of today. All right, so we did not finish the smithing grind on the day I actually wanted to. We are currently almost level 69, so slowly but surely we're making progress. But I did just buy myself a piece of the blacksmith outfit, the first piece on this account, and take a look at this. We are looking fabulous, I must say. Alrighty, folks, we did it. I don't know if I just didn't properly mentally prepare myself for the exhaustive grind that is 60 to 70 smithing, or what the hell was going on, but I can honestly say it feels like I put almost as much time into this as I did my entire 99 thieving grind. Like, I literally don't even want to go get my new armor and tools because I need a break from smithing. So, <laughs> instead, we're gonna go work on getting these uh, engrams for divination. They give a whole bunch of XP, which is gonna feel quite nice after this grind. So, engrams are these random uh, things you can find across the world here. Uh, once you grab them, you have to actually charge them up, and you use uh, different types of energy that you receive from divination. I've actually already done the first two, so we're starting with the third one. Alright, well that last one I couldn't actually do because you had to charge it with Radiant Energy, which requires 85 Divination, but this one just needs uh, Sparkling Energy, so we can go do this one. Alright, so once you charge the Engram, you can just talk to this lady here. There we go, 30,000 experience for that one, and then I think there's also some stuff you can do in here. Um, as you can see, I've already done two of these Engrams. Believe it or not, this bored ape looking guy here is actually Guthix, I'm fairly certain. Um, so yeah, kind of cool. Alrighty, there's the next one. Almost level 65 divination. Oh, I literally didn't know this till just now. So you can have these guys active over here for each of the engrams you collect. And that unlocks these different uh, passive effects that you can have. Currently, right now, I can only have one passive active, but there's some cool ones in here. Okay, bro, this has to be some kind of joke. You literally cannot get this uh, engram. Watch what happens when I click on the Sword of Edicts engram. Little bit of an overlook here with the uh, Wilderness update, I believe. Hopefully they get this fixed soon. But while we patiently wait for Jagex to uh, get that fixed, we can go work on the rest of these. Alright, so this one here should be level 65 divination. There we go. Another 30-some thousand experience. Man, this is pretty awesome. Definitely putting a nice boost into our divination XP. Alright, so this is actually the last one that I can do um, because I don't have enough memory strands. But there we go, that's level 66 divination. Now, you get the actual memory strands from actually training the skill, so I'm gonna have to do some of that at some point. So, I think it's time that we finally do that solo 5 mechanic Glacier kill. I know last video, a lot of people complained that I kind of too quickly glossed over this boss. So, today I'm gonna show you all 5 of the mechanics and explain each of them. First up, we have these little Glacites here. You basically have to kill them before you can damage the boss again. Next up, we have the Danger Lightning. You avoid these or they drain your health and your prayer. Third, we've got the easiest mechanic which also heals you, but only in normal mode, and that's the health cannon. If you don't use your shield properly here, it will probably one-shot you. Fourth, we've basically got a jad phase, this is where you're gonna get most of your DPS in. And finally, my least favorite mechanic which was kind of holding me back, Glacor basically throws up and you gotta beat his arm until he gets up. 
The problem is, it's a DPS check, and prior to my last attempt, I was not using Devotion, which grants you basically 10 more seconds if needed. Now, Glacor has an absolute shit ton of health on five mechanics, but I think we can pull this off. Alright, first time trying that exposed core. This time I have Devotion, so we should be able to get through here, I'm thinking. There we go. Easy peasy. Oh, we are so close. Come on. Just a couple more thousand damage. I'm just gonna tank it. There we go, dude. That is all five mechanics done solo. Uh, it took us about 14 minutes, I believe. Let's see what we got. Nice, literally 1.2 mil in value. 34 crystal keys. That, that's kind of crazy. So, very happy with that kill. Obviously, it still takes quite a while to get kills. That's why it's better to duo um, the whole five mechanic one. But now we can technically enable hard mode. <laughs> I won't be doing that just yet, though. Obviously, there are a lot of you viewers who already know this boss and know all the mechanics, and uh, I'm sorry that I had to explain everything, but I do have a lot of viewers who are actually quite new to the game, and so hearing about this kind of thing could be very interesting to them. You know, slowly but surely, I have been uh, doing some of my player own farm. I'm definitely not doing it uh, super efficiently just yet, but I can go ahead and buy myself the bank chest. There we go, now we have a bank chest right here. This is going to be super handy in the future. And this should actually be level 67 divination. Uh, still quite a ways off 68. Nice, that's level uh, 73 woodcutting. As per usual, we're doing some woodcutting in the background whenever we get some downtime. All right, we are currently just mining. I am done putting off not getting my new armor, but uh, there we go, that's actually level 74 mining, so not too shabby. I gotta say though, I can already tell the grind when we have to go to 80 smithing is gonna be insane. I can't imagine how long it's gonna take us. Um, I had somebody in my stream mention that you could just work on it like an hour a day, an hour here, an hour there, instead of doing it all in one go, and I think honestly that's probably the best way moving forward. Surprise, surprise, we got ourselves another smithing level. I can't help but feel like this whole episode's just been smithing, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. Uh, Necronium actually upgrades all the way to plus four, so... Well, we are officially a Necronium Nelly, and I gotta say, this armor looks freaking insane, man. I made the shield too, and it's probably one of the most badass looking sets I've seen in-game. I'm actually surprised it's only tier 70, because this looks like some end-game, like, you can kill everything in the game kind of armor, but, uh, yeah, it's kind of shit. Alright, so this here is kind of a milestone. This will be level 70 Herblore. Uh, I'm not sure if we unlock anything at level 70. Oh yeah, Dwarf Weeds, uh, Super Divination Potion. I'm not quite sure how that works, but yeah, kind of cool. Well, I just quickly came to DK's to do a Dagonoth task, and there is Berserker Ring number 3. Uh, not too bad, man. And just doing our daily uh, beehive run, we got ourselves level 61 farming, and along with it, 1800 total level. Um, I feel like 1800 means a lot more in old school than on here because there's so many more skills, but I still think it's kind of cool. So I've been saving up a bunch of broad arrowheads for the fletching grind. Uh, if you take a look in my bank here, I've got about 27,000 of them, which I know isn't that many in the grand scheme of things. But I think I'm going to go ahead and use all these Acadia logs. I have a ton of them since uh, we've been doing that woodcutting grind to 75. And I'm going to use up all these fletching supplies in the bank and we'll see what level we get to. I feel like this is the best place to do any bank standing skill. It uh, really allows you to come to terms with your own mortality. But anyway, this will be all the pre-fletching fletching supplies made up, and we actually got two levels just from that. Anyway, now it's time for the real XP. We're starting at about 200k fletching XP and level 57, so let's see where we get. You know, we've had a lot of slower grinds lately, but this 225 XP drop every, like, half a millisecond might just be one of the best things I've ever experienced. I'm so happy right now. Believe it or not, just a couple of moments later, we are already level 60 fletching. Oh, and now seems like as good a time as ever to remind you guys that about two hours after this video's release, we are going to be live over on twitch.tv slash waydots, so make sure to follow. Thank you, please. Alrighty, and that's actually going to be the last level we are getting. Level 68 fletching with over 400,000 XP gained. 
Not too bad, man. Son, why don't you sit down here in front of this fire and let me tell you a story. A story of how I got the urge to go try a new boss. So, I don't know what's gotten into me lately, but I've just been having too much fun killing new bosses. Now, obviously, GW1 is in old school RuneScape as well. However, the games are so dramatically different, and in some cases, I don't quite know what to expect. All I know is while getting the KC, I picked myself up some hybrid Zami gloves, so that was kind of cool. All right, that's enough. I'm sorry. I don't know why I kept that voice going on for so long. Maybe drop a like for my sanity. We need to check in with that every once in a while. But anyway, Zami went well. As expected, I got smacked around like crazy, the dude hits like a complete truck, the minions did not let up in the slightest, and I had no idea if I was praying the right thing. I tried to kind of kite him around, I thought that might work a bit better, but in the end, I opted to just stand right underneath him and attempt to out DPS the guy. You guys said you wanted more insight into my attempts at bossing, and honestly, this is pretty typical. I like to go in with no prior information and kind of feel the situation out, and then maybe after check out a guide. This time, however, while we did end up getting the kill, I have a feeling that God Wars 1 is slightly overleveled for me still. At the moment, for this to be something I can come back at farm, I just don't find it too likely. At least for Krill. I'm a little uncertain of the other bosses, but feel free to let me know if you guys have any other suggestions. So, I'm thinking I would like to complete Desert Treasure. However, there are a couple of quests I need to do beforehand, including the tourist trap, so let's do this right now. We are absolutely zooming, my friends. Alright, listen here, Anna. I know there's a guard right here, but I'm gonna need you to just, uh, get in this barrel. It's for your own good. Alright, this is the quest completed. Uh, I think I'm gonna throw this experience. Honestly, this might be a dumb decision, but I think I'm gonna throw it into agility, just because I think that's gonna be the biggest benefit for us at the moment. Oh, there's a good 9,000 agility experience, and, uh, that's the quest complete. Now, there's only one quest we have left to do before we can actually start Desert Treasure, and that is Temple of Ikov. It's going to be kind of nice, since there's no Graceful in uh, RuneScape 3, the Boots of Lightness are actually quite useful. Uh, there's a lot of quests that require you to reduce your weight, so when we have those, that'll be a big help. You know, abilities in RuneScape 3 make this so much better, because we really won't need that many Ice Arrows, um, since you don't use ammunition nearly as often. Catch you later, bro. Uh, should be the quest complete there. 10,000 ranged, uh, 8,000 fletching, obviously the Boots of Lightness. Most importantly though, we can now start Desert Treasure. Hey, look at that. That was actually level 70 ranged. Nice, dude. Okay, so I think I've got all the items I could possibly need. Preparation for quests on Iron Man is always a bit of a process, but let's go start Desert Treasure. As Garnia Smith, my man, I am ready. No turning back now. Okay, now just hold up a second. This man is standing over here. Eblis, and also over here. He is all-powerful. He is literally a god. He is standing in two locations at the exact same time, bending both space and time continuum. Amazing. All right, it's time for the first uh, fight of the quest. Whoa, what the hell? He looks way cooler on here than in uh, old school. You know, for a quest boss, he actually has quite a bit of health, especially when it comes to these older quests. They usually don't uh, have such a large health pool. You know, the wiki said to bring 5 to 10 food, even if you are a maxed main. I don't think I'm going to use a single piece of food in this fight, so... I'm not really sure why the wiki wants you to over-prepare so hard. Easy peasy, man. Alrighty, time for boss fight number two. This one kind of sucks because the constant uh, stat drain, but I'm sure we can get through it. See you later, camel. Alright, we have two of the four diamonds. Next up, we're going to do the smoke dungeon, which is like my least favorite of the quest, but let's go give it a try. I guess Surge and also uh, Super Energy Potions makes this a bit easier. We don't quite have the Stamina Potions that Old School has, but I should be able to get all these torches lit. Alright, moment of truth, just open up. Don't make me run back and do this again. There we go, nice dude. And now for the third boss fight. There it is, third diamond acquired. You know, one perk of getting 99 Thieving and the Master Lockpick is this goddamn part of the quest. Such an annoying part usually, but uh, with the master lock pick, this shouldn't be too bad. See you later, bro. There we go. That's the fourth and final diamond. Now we can go wrap this quest up. Ta-da! We have made it. We are done. That probably took me about an hour, I would say. And there we go. Quest completed. We've got 20,000 magic speed, obviously access to the ancient magics uh, spellbook. And now we can also use the uh, bandit camp lodestone, which is going to be super nice. Hey, that got us a magic level, up to level 79. 
Ancient Spellbook. I don't know how useful the Ancient Spellbook really is on RuneScape 3. I don't think it's nearly as useful as it is in Old School. Anyway, folks, that's going to be it for this one. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you are enjoying the content, and I will catch you all in the next one later.